I was looking through the different architectures which can be used for Swift UI at least and then I came across a new architecture called Swift Composable Architecture. There was somebody who, even in the comment section who had mentioned about the architecture being used in his project. So I was like curious to know which, which is the best one which I can adopt. But then I went and saw Composable Architecture is something which is pretty new for Swift UI and even I think it's being used even for Swift I guess and so I was curious to know what is so different about this architecture compared to all the ones which I have used already something like MVVM, Viper, MVP and even MVC we can call it an architecture then this one even Redux I have been using Redux recently for all the React Native and React projects so I was wondering what is so different about this one and I looked up in this website, at least in this GitHub project named Swift Composable Architecture. And I, I was curious to know what these guys have done already. The Composable Architecture is a library for building applications in a consistent and understandable way with composition, testing, ergonomics in mind. It can be used in Swift UI, UI Kit, and more. Okay, so. They were pretty much focused on Swift and Swift UI. So I just got to see what is so different about it. What is a composable architecture? If you look at it, the library provides a few core tools that can be used to build applications of varying purpose and complexity. It provides compelling stories that you can follow, blah, 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 blah. And mainly, if you look at it, state management, that struck me more like how, okay, how a Redux is working. So I, I, I thought maybe it's being adopted from Redux and it talks about composition where uh, break down larger features into smaller components that can be extracted again. This is something I have already worked in projects which are in React Native where you build smaller components to build a larger application. So again, I think because Swift UI is more a declarative programming style than and even React Native is more or less approaches in the same way where you had you can have your components created and your programming style is more of a declarative one compared to let's say um, a, a different approach let's say used in a ui kit so this one sounded more like i would say approaches being adopted from uh, something like a react react native or even angular maybe so side effects there are some, some more bits like side effects. Testing is easier because everything is a component and state if it is maintained at one place like a store, it's easier to then test your features. Ergonomics, okay, those are more like uh, uh, fancy things maybe. So they have built uh, a whole project, different examples, I guess part one, part two, part three. If you are interested, maybe you can watch these episodes to understand what this is all about. And even they have examples like case studies and basic usage is like state environment more like state is something you you already know maybe in swift UI you have states variables being declared and then action again yeah so like i said it's more of a redux thing here because redux is nothing but you have reducers which will have all all the all these state changes being taken care in the uh, in the reducer so these guys are also following more or less whatever is offered by redux so it's more of an extraction from whatever is already possible with let's say a redux framework so th then again you have state action environment reducer and store similar if you have maybe heard of uh, redux these are the same things there like you have a store you have a reducer you have an action you have a dispatch and you have then a state which changes in the reducer so, so pretty much the same i guess it's like app state you're maintaining and i guess uh it's not a huge learning curve for me at least because i already know how to work with redux so if i have to let's say adopt this architecture then it's pretty much easy for me so i am just going through this right now app reducer yeah so you have it at a high level and app reducer but you can even break your break down your reducers into multiple ones for your projects let's say 
so that you have specific use just like in uh, viper here where you have specific use cases for each modules even in this case you can have multiple reducer maybe the whole structure like you can have actions you can have dispatches in this case i don't know what it is but then you can dispatch an action to the reducer using and then it takes care of uh, changing the state and returning that state back to your view to update your view so this is what uh, i think uh, even these guys are trying to adopt here it's more of a uh, redux which came from the guys from facebook uh, maybe it came as something called as flux and then it got transitioned to redux so that's what it is all about i think it's nothing more than that and even that examples here it's more like how whatever is done on let's say react native projects where they mostly explain about increment and decrement of the states and it gets stored in the uh, stored in your uh, state i think nothing fancy here it's just again your redux itself so if you are actually planning to adopt this architecture maybe try to understand how redux evolved and then get back here and see how this is happening so i wanted to just uh, give you a heads up of what i am trying to do here i'm trying to see which is a good art architecture which i can bring in to build the swift ui project which is more of a declarative way of programming so i guess i just wanted to create a shot out of it so maybe i'm in the process of building the larger application for uh, using swift here for the real-time chat application so that's it from my end bye